Good morning. Great. Hello, everyone. Great to see you. If you're a visitor here this morning for the first time, we give you a warm welcome. If you're watching online, we also give you a warm welcome. We give a warm welcome to Richard Weirmouth, um, who will, uh, is going to be speaking. <laughs> Sorry, Captain Richard Weirmouth. Go on, that's a big applause. Captain Richard Weirmouth. Uh, sadly, Valentina's not been able to be with us today because Lucas has, didn't have a very good night. But, uh, but uh, it's a very sad day because uh, Richard has now finished officially in his role as the captain of the chaplains of the Salvation Army in Braintree, being repositioned to Camberwell. And when do you go? Thursday. Thursday. So we've, we've managed to get him, because he gives such a good word, we've managed to get him one more time before before they go as a family. And at some point today, we'll be praying over, over Richard and, and the family. But uh, will you stand with me as we, uh, as we just pray together? I just want to say thank you uh, from, from on behalf of Glacey and I for, for all that you've done for us, for the messages, for the, the food. Somebody said to me this morning, you've lost weight, Andy. I said, well, with four kids and a, and a wife who's just relaxing, With a wife who's just laid up with her foot up, sorry, being very, very unwell, um, I'm running around like a headless chicken and, and, I, and I seem to be losing weight. I, I, I really don't know how women do it and I, I really do, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, really look at how women maintain the home uh, and just keep everything tickety-boo, as Gary would say, and running like clockwork, and I don't know how they do it, but God bless them. And So thank you for everyone who's done anything for us, your prayers, uh, Glacey's on the road to recovery, uh, for which we thank God. So what you've, whatever you've done, messages, flowers, whatever, cards, prayers, food, God bless you. Let's pray, shall we? Father, we come with an attitude of gratitude today for all that you are, for all that you've done. Father, we pray this morning that you, our praise will erupt. As the song says, let this praise erupt with praise. Lord, from the overflow of our innermost being, let praises rise up. Lord, whether we feel like it or not, actually we want to do it because you're worthy of it all. You're worthy to be praised and worshipped and adored. Have your way in this place today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, church. Psalm 150, one of my favorite worship psalms of, um, of the psalms. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power and his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise him with his strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness. Kindness of a Savior. The hope of nation. Savior. All my fears and failures 
follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is my The whole world sing. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Shine your light and let the whole world sing. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Shine your light. Jesus. Shine your light and let the whole world sing.
set for a king, set for a heart singing.
great and marvellous are you. Great and marvellous are you, God. Just speak out some praise to God. Come on, speak up some praises to God. You're great and marvellous. And we sing and we speak hallelujah to our King. Hallelujah to the God over all gods. Hallelujah to you. Lord God Almighty, just and true are your ways, King of the nations. We will not fear and glorify your name. We have taken your power and your reign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, speak out your praise. Hallelujah. Glory to you. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm, yes, you are.
please just take your seats for a second. I think sometimes God really wants to speak into each one of us. And I think that moment's now. And I think what Andy just shared about this timidity, this spirit of fear, this small voice, is really something that God wants to speak to you. Every single one of you. Before that, I just had this idea that it should be a, 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 a louder voice. A, a person was speaking quite timidly and I thought, just want a more voice. And so I think that confirms. And I think what we do is we think, I can't do that. That's not true. God wants to use each and every, every one of us to bear fruit to affect those people we live with, we work with. And what we do is we like we cramp God's spirit in us. It's like, oh no, I can't do that. I can't do that. There's no, in, you will not find that scripture in the Bible. I can't do that. So for you, I just want you to think, Lord, I give you my, my spirit of fear. I give you my, I can't do that. I give you my, no, not me, that's someone else. That's not true. I'm going to get down off here because it seems that I'm higher and I'm not. I am the same. I am exactly, exactly the same as each one of you. I have the same fears. I have the same struggles. And each one of you needs to know that you need to say, Lord, here am I. Take me, send me. Jesus unreservedly poured out his love for you. Do not say, I can't do that. Do not say to yourself, I am not good enough. I'm too old, I'm too young, I haven't been trained. All these are lies. Jesus wants to use you. Kids, Jesus wants to use you. Old people, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Do not, do not restrict God. Let's just pray. Lord, here am I, send me. I thank you, Lord, that you came as a servant and you poured yourself out for me. You shed your blood for me because you showed me how powerfully you love me. And Lord, I want you to take me and Lord, I want to trust you to walk each step of the day with you through my life, through the problems of my life. I want to see you and not the problems. I want to see you and not my fears. I want to be bold, Lord. Here am I, Lord. Use me. Send me. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you say that we are to bear fruit and that fruit will remain. Lord, Lord, I ask you, Lord, help me to bear fruit for you, to walk in time with your Holy Spirit and to glorify your name. Lord, Holy Spirit, will you touch hearts? We touch hearts. Will you speak this truth into their life, Lord, that we may glorify your name, that we may glorify your name, that we may glorify your name, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The King is in the room. Look at darkness flee from him. And there's resurrection power in his name. There's freedom in his name. Amen. Resurrection power in the name of Jesus. That really stuck in my mind as I was driving here this morning. Is resurrection power in Jesus. And I just wondered if there's something that you need resurrected. Something that you had that had died. A hope or a, or a dream for the future. If that applies to you, we'll take it. The king is in the room. We'll watch the darkness flee. Come on, let's stand up. Let's sing the king is in the room.
with that restriction and I think it's in line with what was already been shared some of us still have that will clamp on some of us are holding on to the restrictions because it makes us feel safe but the Lord's saying let go let go and be fit for his purposes let go do business with God now if you haven't done it before and let go he will meet you he will not let you down but let go His name is Jesus. Mm. His name is Jesus. 
I've not experienced an anointing like that for a long time. Glory to God. If you're worried about it, come and talk to me afterwards. I'll explain. But look at my face. Am I bothered? Behold, I'm doing a new thing, says the Lord. And if that's a new anointing, so be it. I've already had that prayed over me today. I've just said, 
Richard's theme today is called The Great Escape. And how many of you, like me, as soon as he told me his theme, you started going... Am I the only one? I had to Google the theme tune, because obviously I'm not in that era of The Great Escape. So I had to Google what the theme tune was, and I thought, is that... I just thought, now, the song, the worship has really laid a foundation, and God has already spoken... Uh, numerous times today, and I think the foundation has already been laid for, for Richard. Richard, come, we welcome you. Let's give Richard a hand. <laughs> and is there somebody that can translate? I think it could be you. After all those years. <laughs> let's, let's, let's stretch out our hands, shall we, and let's pray. Let's all lift our voices, shall we? Let's not just be me. Let's just lift our voices and ask God that the Holy Spirit right now will anoint our brother and anything that he doesn't, the Holy Spirit doesn't want him to say, Lord, the Holy Spirit will fill his mouth with what he wants him to say. Lord, that's what we're asking for today. We're asking, Lord, that Richard will be full of your spirit as he brings the word of God to us today. We pray release. We pray for a freedom as he ministers to us. Lord, have your way. And Lord, as he gives out, Lord, may he receive back a double portion. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, have your way in this place. You've not finished with us this morning, I believe. Have your way in this place. Give us open hearts and ears to listen. In Jesus' name. Amen. There's water on that for you. Oh, thank you very much. Well, isn't it amazing how God lays a foundation the voices of authority this morning spoken over us in Jesus' name that the cat be gone, the pussy cat be gone, the lion f- fill, fill us. And you know, in my own life, I don't know about you, when someone said, oh, you said that well, you did it with anointing. Oh, not me. It couldn't have been me, Lord. I, I, it's not me. And when I, we, me and my wife were recently on a, a marriage retreat and we were talking about things that hold us back. And you know, things that ho- have held me back are, are shame shame in my life and things that just, you know, you're not good enough to do that, Richard. And today when we're talking about kind of, I was looking at Exodus, that's the first thing Moses said to God when he did call him, me, who's going to even listen to me? No one's going to listen to me. What will I say to the people? And he says, no, go in my name. And we come today in God's strength. And we come here to preach the word of liberation, don't we? Freedom, no clamps on the car. You could have a Ferrari. You could be a Ferrari. You could be a Land Rover or whatever car you quite like. But it's useless, isn't it? It's a useless. We've got all of that if we don't be free from it. But, you know, as I was thinking about uh, and looking through Exodus, Pharaoh was a tough old man, wasn't he? And uh, Moses, um, it's quite an amazing character, isn't it? Um, We recently journeyed with some people from the foyer. We had a a great time. We managed to take them to Barcelona. But um, I was aware that many people have very difficult settings in their life. People who have had to give up their own children. People who have been brought up without parents. And Moses kind of fits that bill, doesn't he? He was sent over the Nile. He was distanced from his people and brought up in Pharaoh's court somewhere. I might quite like to be. I quite like five-star treatment. You know, oh, this is, I could get used to this life. His life was completely different to the people of slavery who or even Worse than that, the death that he might have faced as a child. He was removed from all of that and brought into something completely different. But when the time came, when he came and he knew of his own people and he went out to see them, his heart was filled probably with a righteous anger. And he probably didn't demonstrate it in a very good way, but I was thinking about it. He hadn't got the Ten Commandments yet, or Jesus, so maybe he didn't know. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But when he's seen the oppressor, oppressing his own people well we know what happened he killed the egyptian man and his history was changed forever because he he couldn't really go back to pharaoh because as the people knew oh moses are you going to do that to me oh my goodness i'm going to have to flee and pharaoh wanted to kill him and so his circumstances changed but first of all i thought of that moses had a heart of compassion didn't he he had a heart for liberation he had a heart for justice would you say that Because he didn't just think, oh, well, all my people are down here getting whipped to slavery, and I'm all right in my castle in the pharaohs. Nothing's going to come to harm to me where I am, so I'll just stay where I am. And I thought that was also a message for the church. Maybe not this church, 
because uh, this is an amazing church. But often, I think, as a church, we can just become so comfortable in our towers. We can even have a little bit of an ego. I've been here 50 years, and, oh, I'm, I'm an elder of the church, and I'm this, and I'm that. And all of a sudden, this, the church builds these own pharaohs, these people that control it, the people that are super worshipped within it. And then we have a problem because they're so comfortable, they've forgotten about the injustice in the world. They've forgotten about the whosoever. They've forgotten about the poor. They've forgotten about the brokenhearted. They've forgotten about those that come with questions. Now, when I read Exodus, I tremble at it, to be honest. I'm like, oh my goodness, if people read this, what are they going to think of God? God killing kids? It's, it doesn't sound right, does it? You know what I mean? When you say God hardened Pharaoh's heart, you kind of want to quickly turn the page. This isn't the God I know. And I can confirm that when I'm troubled with a text, I always go through to the line of Jesus, the lens of Jesus, because where we have that, and probably we'd probably be all comfortable teaching the New Testament every day without turning a page back over. Well, I might just speak for myself because love, compassion, freedom, resurrection, and everything we've talked about in Jesus' name. It's easy to talk about, isn't it? It's what we want. But when we look back, we realize actually the injustices that people had in those days and how actually people were expecting Jesus to be kind of the God that destroyed, the God, the God who come with a mighty power um, in a kind of violent way. And I wonder today, as we reflect upon, upon what happened in those times and what happened with Jesus, how we face people who are persecuted today. How do we come upon that? Because we, we, we come upon in Jesus' name, but we certainly couldn't, we wouldn't come in violence. We're not going to go out there and start thinking, as an, as an army of Christians, how are we going to destroy the enemy? Because he gets a foothold in our life, doesn't he? How do we get that away? And that's kind of the great escape today. When I was thinking about Pharaoh, he was so hard-pressed, he just wouldn't let them go. And it was funny, as... Um, the, the picture was brought to us, that is exactly what was in my mind, the Pharaoh, let my people go, no, let my people go, no, let my people go, no. And sometimes that's how the enemy is holding on to us. And I'm sure you've experienced it in your life, but I've seen it in others who are really struggling with addiction. And we want to speak over them, let, let them people go, let that addiction go. And sometimes the more you work at it, the stronger it gets, it puts up a fight, doesn't it? Or you want to you wanna save yourself now. I'm going to show you how I can put up a fight. And Pharaoh put up quite a fight, didn't he, to, before people were released. It took that kind of that action from God that would seem brutal for him to eventually release them. And even then, he chased after them. And I wonder today, as we reflect upon that, what, what are we in bondage? What is holding us in bondage? Is it shame? Is it guilt? What is stopping the lion coming out? Because it may be something. What, what's keeping the clamp on your leg? How do we claim that today and say, Lord, release me. Release me. I want to be a lion. I want to have the fullness of life in Jesus' name. I want to have every gift that you want to bestow on me. I want to have a, live in the perfect Christian community. I want to see heaven come down, glory fill this place, and just rest in your kingdom. So we pray today in that if there's anything, if there's any pharaohs, if there's anything grabbing onto us, whatever it is, that that's released. And that's the kind of perspective I came at from Moses. Like that's our individual response, isn't it? How are we released? And then I thought, how corporately are we released? Because once Moses had received, once that the Lord had said, well, if you can't speak, just use your brother Aaron. He'll, he'll speak. And we need to know that too, that we're not on this alone. We don't have to face this alone. Already today we've seen the anointing of the Holy Spirit work in different people in different ways. And we pray for them and we encourage them. And that's how it works, I believe. When one person is anointed in one thing, another person can be anointed in another thing. We haven't, unless you're a miracle there, uh, and you've got every gift God ever gave, and God bless you for that. I know I haven't. But then we have to work with each other's gifts. And therefore, corporately, together, we work our way through life. So you're not in this alone. If you're facing bondage, if there's things that are tying you down, seek help from one another. Love, I suppose love's the, the biggest one, but more so people who've got the power of authority in prayer. There might be some actually who's got the authority to speak straight over someone. I know that in the beginning of the Salvation Army, which is kind of where I've been brought up, I was so passionate to hear about when people came to the, the drum or the band where they're playing in the knelt and they said, wow, 
he's not an alcoholic anymore. Come into our fellowship. Wow, he's anointed. He's not an, into drugs anymore. Come, come in. And I long to see that anointing. But sometimes it's, it's just not that easy. I'm sure Tony knows from Hope House, and I know all too well from new direction and work and that addiction and things that labor in people's lives, it takes such a removal and we can become disheartened. Um, this week was a, my grand, he's 86, and uh, a young guy come and knock on his door and said, can I cut your garden grass for him? And my grand had been so kind, said, okay. And the guy had no tools, so my grand opened up his shed, cut my grand's grass for, the, said, 30 pound. And then he wanted, I think, 60 pound. And then he ended up robbing my granddad's wallet off him. And then off he went, never to be seen. And I thought, my goodness, what's going on in the world when an 86-year-old man, very vulnerable, has given someone an opportunity, given him some money, and he's, he's been robbed? What person could do that? And that kind of the line is another point I wanted to raise, actually. It's, it can come out of liberation theology, if you've heard of it. And it's about when we actually pray for the persecuted and the persecutor. And I think that's where we come from in the line of Jesus. God did defeat Pharaoh in a way. He had to do it in quite a, quite a brutal way so he could free his people. So I'm well aware that God can do it. God can do it in a mighty way. He can destroy the enemy in that way. But Jesus taught us an even different way, which is very difficult. And it's not something that uh, we can take lightly as Christians. And that is that we love our enemies. How do we do that? How do we love our enemies? How do we pray and pray for those who persecute people? And therefore, when I was thinking about that and story, me and Valentina were chatting. We said, you know, it's so sad for my granddad that he's been robbed and he's now scared, he's vulnerable. But it's so sad too that someone would do that. What was on their heart and mind to rob an 86-year-old man? What kind of life are they leaving? How did they become so troubled in life that they could do such a thing? And so I think it is that today we look upon people that are in bondage. And first of all, we want to be free from our own bondage. So we perhaps look at that singly. It, we look through the line of Moses who said, I'm not good enough. Who am I? And was Moses a lion? Oh, my goodness. When he put that staff down and the seas opened, when he put that staff down and said to Pharaoh, let my people go, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, can you believe it? Can you imagine going now to Downing Street, you know, and saying, right, boom, let my people go. Who's this crazy man? Did the power of God went to the most, the highest person on earth probably at the time, and uh, he defeated him. Sorry, I get off on a little point there because it's just such a, it's such a thing, isn't it, that God can defeat that. But I was thinking that how we have to pray for the persecuted and the persecutor. And that's the Jesus, that's the God I know. When I'm troubled with the Old Testament, I come to Christ to think, wow, we serve such a powerful God. We serve a, a Jesus Christ who liberated us to liberate others. And so Moses, he was an instrument of deliverance, wasn't he? I would say he was, a, he, he was an instrument of deliverance. And as we are delivered, as we release our chains, as we release our clamps, we become people who are liberated to liberate others. Would you agree with that? We're not called just to be in Pharaoh's tower or castle to live a life of splendor in God's community. That's a beautiful thing. It's a must. We must live in fellowship with one another. I think that was when I first came here, that was our message from the Lord then, wasn't it? That we dwell together in perfect community. That's a must. That's like a non-negotiable. That's my aim. That's what I love, relationship with one another. But as, our, as we are called, as we are liberated, as we are free to be a lion, to have the lion's voice, to have the voice of authority. And I know you've been doing this, praying in the street, releasing people from their own bondage. I think that's who the people become. That's our calling. Would you say that? Our calling is as we receive grace, as we receive resurrection living, as we receive Christ, as we're delivered across the Red Sea, as our enemies, we hope, are trampled before us, whatever they are. I don't know what enemies are in your mind or in your heart. Because when I look at enemies, my enemies, that's normally where they are. I'm not kind of, I don't live in persecution. I'm not very much in their brain tree anyway. You know, I don't go out on a Saturday night, so I don't get any problems with violence. Uh, but uh, 
I'm not per- I can freely walk to Elam Church. I can park along the street. And I love walking here. The, the, this church, Elam, it beckons me in. And when I walk al- along here, I mean, someone said, are you off to church today, Richard? I, I am. I'm going to Elam Church today. I can't wait. It, it draws me in. It draws me in to worship God. And people to see that, it's a, it's a light to the community. But I often said, I thank you. Oh, there's a light to the community. But as we shine our light... As Pharaoh come, I often know that, and as Andy proclaimed the day, and rightfully so he prayed, the enemy doesn't want to leave us alone. He's awful. He doesn't want us to be liberated, other people. And I, I hate to say that. And that, like Pharaoh, he wants to, to grip on. He wants to grip onto us. And I think this church, I believe it through, this church has been making ground in Braintree. Would you say that? It's actually been shaking the ground, and he doesn't like it. And that we've started to see miracles happen. I've been drawn here. I love it here. I could even call this a spiritual home for me, I'll be quite honest. I love it. I want the churches and Braintree to come together. I want them to be a mighty force for the kingdom. Because I think the enemy is strong. strong. We could, to go out alone would, would be foolish. But my, you've been shaking the ground here. You've been proclaiming the voice of liberation. You've been saying, you know, you will be free from addiction. You will be free from depression. You will be free from anxiety. You will be free from things that labor the mind and the heart to say, I, I am nothing. You have got a meaning in life. Moses maybe thought he didn't have a meaning in life. Who am I? I'm, I'm brought up in a, as an Egyptian when I'm a Hebrew. And my own people, maybe they don't even want me. But the Lord's called me through a burning bush. And it, it's funny when you read that, it says that when Moses started question, questioning God, he said God got angry. I was like, no, it's not, the, not is that the God I know. But I can imagine God saying, how many times have I got to tell you you're a lion? How many times have I got to tell you that's who you are? You are a voice of authority. Go to the people and go in my name. If you go alone, as you go as just Moses, the boy on the Nile, you'll be nothing. If you go as Richard or you go as Andy or you go as yourself, you'll go as nothing. But if you allow me to fill you, as weak as you are, as... Whatever your upbringing is, whether you were born to another and you weren't raised by your own family, where you were, whether you were born and raised in any way, whether your parents weren't even Christians, it, none of that matters. None of it matters at all, does it? It doesn't matter where we come from, but it does matter where we're going. It matters where we're going. And Moses, I mean, he didn't even get to see the promised land. I feel a bit sorry for him. He was so nearly in sight. And I mean, that drives me crazy. As I leave Braintree, I think, Lord, there's so much unfinished work. What's the point? You know what I mean? I've, we've labored at hard ground at times. Why were we the ones to break our back laying hard ground for someone else just to come and get the fruit of it? You know what I mean? You can be like that. I want, I want to be on the fruitful side, Lord. Can, give, I want the harvest. That's what I want. I've worked and labored. I want to see the harvest. That's the joy. But that's, that's life, isn't it? That's God. He says, we will all, we will all see the harvest. Maybe it's this day or maybe it's another. Maybe someone else will be just the right person. Maybe it's we were just the right person to hammer the hard ground. Maybe it's we were just the right voice at the time. And then the next voice comes. And so scripture came and was all fulfilled, even though Moses didn't see the promised land. We know that he will have seen God's promised land, the new Jerusalem, the new Zion, the new place where God will dwell. And we will all dwell in his presence. And I think that's where we all want to be, isn't it? We want to all constantly dwell in the presence of God. And that's what we do when we come in this place, isn't it? We said, we've been singing that. The healer is here. The king is here. God is here. He's within us. And I think we have to claim that. That is our life. That is who we are. We are liberated in him. The only one who can release them clamps in our life is God. He can release the voices in our head. He can release the voices in our heart. He can change our past. He can create a new future. And the little pussycat's no longer. You're a lion. You've got the voice of a lion. You're an anointed people. You're a spiritual people. You're a people liberated to liberate others. People will be liberated. We claim that in Jesus' name. People will be liberated. Anxieties will cease. Depressions will cease. And we will come to know the Lord in all its fullness. And I pray that for this place, that we will know the Lord in all its fullness, that the fullness of the Lord will be yours. And I think that's probably my message for today as we look at the great escape. The great escape is the great escape from bondage. It's, that's what it is. It's the great escape from sin. It's an awful one. It's, when it gets a hold of you, 
it's awful, isn't it? I've heard people say, I just kind of shift the anxiety. And when I've had it myself, you're like, just go from me for crying out loud. Get out of my life. I'm sick to death of you being there. But sometimes <laughs> it drifts back in, doesn't it? It drifts back into us. But when we have the Lord, when we come together in fellowship, then in the Lord's name, all can be removed. And I pray perhaps today is a marker. I hope it's a marker. And I hope it's a marker for me and for others to say, be gone. Bondage, things that have held me, things that have stopped me, things that stop me living life in all its fullness. This is an end. And we say that in Jesus' name, be gone. So today, I, I thank you, each one person here. I, I am your friend. I love you. I know that you love me. That's, that's the kingdom. I will always love you. I'll always know everyone here. We will always be a people of God. And as Moses moved them people along into the promised land, we are a people on the move. We are a journeying people. We are being transformed, as it says on that, we are being transformed into the likeness of Christ until one day we shall be completely free of this world and one with him. So thank you, brothers and sisters in Christ. And may we all today, as we have a response time, just perhaps release, release what's stopping us so that we might take upon what God has in store for us. I'm going to ask the, uh, the worship team to, to come back, and I, I, just, I believe we need to respond to that this morning. As, as Richard was speaking, can we sing that song, The Healer's in the Room, again? Can we do that? Is that okay? And I'm thinking whether you're watching online, the healer's in your room. He's not here, just here, but the healer's in your room, wherever you're watching today. So as we have this time now, declare that while you're at home. Declare that for your life. There was four areas I believe that God wanted to minister this morning. Is people who need a miracle in their life. People who need to kill the cat and release the lion. That kind of timidity. The people to let go and release the wheel clamp. What is it you're not releasing? And declaring there's freedom in his name. If you need freedom from something. Folks, we're live streaming, but when... I think we'll put the cross up so that people can then feel they can come forward and not be on, on screen. Uh, I don't want anyone to feel shy about that. I want people. So when we sing, let's just open up our hearts and let's just say, Lord, I need a touch from you this morning. I need some freedom in my life. I need some things in my life. I need some changes in my life. I need to kill the cat and release the lion. I need to release that clamp over my life. Let's worship together and let's respond and let's be a people that live in freedom, walk in freedom and escape. Du -du 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 <laughs> in Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand, shall we? Let's worship the Lord. And just come. Don't wait. Just come and there'll be people to pray for you. Thank you.
some people are just having a little bit of butterflies in their tummy that's not hunger I just believe that if you've got butterflies in your tummy then you that's the Spirit of God prompting you to receive prayer today this morning don't leave this place without prayer amen otherwise that would indicate that everyone's life is brilliant which is great but I want to encourage you. If you need prayer this morning, if you need releasing from something, if you need healing, if you need that shyness and timidity to be gone, to release the lion inside of you. How many of you want to release the lion? Some of you are not sure. Some of you are still quite happy being pussycats. Can I tell you, Satan does not fear pussycats. He strokes them. He doesn't fear pussycats, but he fears lions. He fears lions. If you want to release that lion inside of you, can I encourage you to come forward? Can I encourage you to receive from Jesus today? Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Healers in the room. Yes, he is. The miracles break out across his eyes. The Savior's in the room. No soul beyond the boundaries of his grace. There's resurrection power in his name. His name is Jesus, light of the world, there's freedom in His name, awesome in power, reigning forever, light of the world, there's freedom in His name. His name is Jesus, 
the world there's freedom in his name 